You look so you. great. Thank you. So do you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> By the way, I talked to Secretary of Transportation of our entire country, and I talked to him about a dating app because I know that you guys met. That's true. On a dating app. Yeah. And that gives me so much hope. <laughs> it does. And when you walked out here, I just all of a sudden felt like I was in his shoes seeing you walk in. And I understand Stop maybe there was now. love at first sight. Oh. <laughs> I it, think there was. Was it yeah. love at first sight with you guys? You know, it was just such a good date. And I think that's the thing that you will know. You will know when it's a good date. And I had been on so many bad dates. I'm sure we have all been on so many bad dates. Yep. Uh, and I took a chance on going on this date, and I think I knew pretty quickly uh, because it was like a storybook date. What'd there you was, do? What was the date? Or was, was that too personal? To, no, it was supposed to be a beer, and then I got stuck in traffic. I, I lived in Chicago. He was in South Bend. Uh, and then it moved to a dinner, and then he was like, oh, I've got these tickets to a ball game. Do you want to go to a ball game? Very sly. Went to the ball game. They had fireworks that night at the stadium. It was silly. Wow, fireworks literally on the first date. Yeah, I yeah. And I do wonder, like, should we set you up on a date? <gasps> now like... we're talking, <laughs> Drew. Can we set you up on a date? Yeah, of course. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with my friends who are single is to help them edit their dating profiles. Yes, listen, he's, yeah. he's right, he's can right. Can I please have, can you please help me? Yeah, absolutely. Because whatever I've done on my dating app is just, it's, 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 um, it, it how do I put this? It's like, um, it, nothing's happening. Maybe you need a couple wingmen to take a look. Yeah, no problem. And, Would you guys edit, seriously help me? Because I am in a stagnant state on my dating app, and I think it needs a reboot, and I would love for you guys to help me. Oh, I be, need guidance. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, yeah. by the way. We'll help you. We'll help. You're so fortunate. We see you guys as, a, as such a beautiful family, and it's a thank representation you. we didn't have that long ago. And it, yeah. I thought a lot about that. When reading your book, it's of course called I Have Something to Tell You for Young Adults. And you talk about here about feeling, people feeling like a fish out of water all the time. Will we ever stop feeling like fish out of water? I don't think so. And part of my goal for sharing my story and sharing it so vulnerably is to highlight that fact, for, for, especially for younger people, that we all feel this way all the time. I, I'm constantly suffering from imposter syndrome. Mm. Like, do I deserve this platform? Should it be me? Should it be us, you know, at, at the Easter egg roll? Like, uh, am I the right person to be up here on this stage, sharing, writing this story, sharing my story? But, but the fact is, like, when you embrace the qualities about yourself that make you weird or make you different or make you feel like you stand out from the crowd, uh, you start to see what actually makes you truly powerful and unique and beautiful. And when, when Pete was running for president, I, I thought I would have to hide all of those things the same way I hid them when I was younger. Interesting. And then I leaned into him and I said, I can't pretend to be somebody I'm not. And for young people, this book is really important because it's essential that you know from a very early age that you are fine just the way you are. Mm -hmm. That you are not defined... <laughs> Thanks. You're not defined by your surroundings. You're not defined by the opinions of other people. And I, when I was growing up in conservative rural Michigan, I thought I was the only gay person in the world. I thought something was twisted and wrong with me. I thought something in my DNA was uh, compromised. And I spent 18 years of my life hating this fact about me. And now that I've grown up and I've accepted it, I, I have a fantastic relationship with my family, uh, I realize that it, it does not define me at all. Yeah. And this is the book I wish I would have had when I was that scared middle schooler walking through the hallways of school, that, you know, that arm around your shoulder saying, like, don't pay attention to these people. And I am, I am so privileged to be able to, to sit here and write that book and have this platform and, and be able to spread that goodness. <laughs>